Thank you. Fun fact, the last name of the main character in the movie is Taylor. Aaron Taylor Johnson plays Ford in Godzilla, and Jonas Taylor is played by Jason Statham in The Meg. This film is Warner Brothers' attempt to focus on giant monster movies, which seem to be more successful than their comic book properties at this point. In the beginning of the movie, a group of scientists discover an ancient alpha predator. The creature is big. How big? Big enough to take out a submarine. You just got word of a missing Russian sub in the North Pacific. $30 million sub gone. The scientists aren't sure whether or not the monster is hostile, but after the alpha predator causes a massive explosion that injures a lot of people, it's safe to say peace isn't an option. One of the characters has to make a tough decision and slam the door shut on a few of the workers to save a majority of the crew. So he definitely starts off on the wrong foot with the beast. After the explosion, he tries to alert the authorities and credits the explosion to the monster. But people are dismissive and thinks he's crazy. It's not until years later that the Asian doctor and his team confirm that he's not crazy and actually makes more sense than anyone else in the movie. The monster attacks the research facility and causes a lot of destruction. The team gathers around the table to weigh their options. They look at old photos and files of the creature, and after learning what the monster is capable of doing, the hero accepts the job offer and joins the team. But I'm afraid we need your help. He's a part of this team. I'll give the movie credit for having such a diverse team. They have a character from almost all of the continents. But the film also creates a stereotype that Asian people don't know how to watch their children, so that cancels out the cool points the movie gets for diversity. Obviously, the little kid wanders off. And obviously, the little kid gets attacked by the monster. And obviously, the little kid gets lucky and survives. Unfortunately, the adults don't have the same luck as kids in this movie. Especially the parents, because there's this one scene when one of the main character's pops dies, and the monster barely even touched him. While the team is tracking the monster, they get a signal that a vessel is destroyed out in the ocean. Special Forces team Sparta-1 is picking up a distress signal, northwest of Diamond Head on the island of Oahu. I've got an emergency locator beacon. It means the boat has gone down. While the team is out on the water, they get devastating news. The bad news is that there's more than one monster they have to worry about. As if one weren't enough already, they have to deal with multiple bogeys now. They alert the military and they send some destroyers and helicopters to kill the giant. They butta da 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 butta da 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 butta da 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 the monster up, but don't make a dent. What's even worse is they're not even able to stop the creature from reaching the mainland. The beast reaches the beach shore and a stampede of civilians run for cover. Since common sense is ignored, a small group of armed men assemble to take down the monster. This is a stupid idea because man was not meant to battle animals on a level playing field. The main character realizes this and sets up a distraction for another predator. While the monster is focusing on the humans, it gets bit like some vampire victim and it's a wrap after that. The hero flees from the action by hitching a ride on a boat. And after that, everyone, except all the people who died or got eaten, live happily ever after. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so. If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps> <laughs> Best elevator music I've ever heard.